I moved calmly through the station, getting side glances from the humans around me and even a few Torians before I stood at the human ambassador's office. First contact with humanity and the Arachnids had only happened barely months ago, so tensions were high but friendly. I was the ambassador for the Arachnids people. Humans called us Space Spiders, and the Torians Space Oxen. Strange creatures, humans. Never figured out what it meant. I looked at the secretary, delightful lady who looked up at me with a smile and pressed a button. I absentmindedly used a hind leg to scratch an itch on my thorax. Ambassador Carson, Ambassador Chishhash is here to see you as requested. Oh, excellent. Please let him in, came the response. You may go in. Would you like me to bring you some tea? She asked, and beamed a smile at me. Oh, that would be delightful. And don't be greedy with the biscuits. I winked at her, closing four of my eight eyes. A trait we learned from humans. A sign of trust, apparently. I opened the door to the ambassador's office, having to tilt my body to the side to fit into it. Annoying, but the humans hadn't yet had the chance to modify all their structures to fit us. I walked into the office, and I almost immediately got taken aback by the sight of something that filled me with rage. Two of our juveniles trapped in two separate glass boxes. Out of anger, I charged forward and closely looked at them. Something was... off. It... looked like one of our juveniles. It had the size, shape, eight legs, eight front eyes, large thorax. It had red tips on his knee joints and head. It had fangs like we did. But something wasn't... right. I made noises, calling it. It failed to respond, a machine wandering around its confinement. The other one was larger. Pitch black exterior with reflective chitin and massive fangs. The smell was strange, foreign, and my fear response kicked in as I caught the scent of a potent toxin. My paternal instincts instantly vanished. They looked... wrong. They smelled wrong. They felt wrong. But what is this? I asked. My mouth passed clicking in confusion. Good morning to you, Ambassador Chick Hatch. This is what I called you in for, Ambassador Carson said, sitting at his desk. I sat confused for a while before his secretary came in with some tea and a few biscuits. We had come to deeply appreciate human culinary arts, and I found pastries and cookies to be the best thing ever. Nervous, I started eating and taking loud slurps of my tea. Thank you, Kimberly. Even as confused as I was, I never forgot my manners. You are welcome, sir. Do enjoy. We have coconut this time. She smiled again, put the snacks down and left. I just stood there and stared at the two strange items in front of me. Finally, after what seemed an age, I looked up at him. The fuck? He just smiled and chuckled. Nice to see you aren't trying to rip my legs off. I called this meeting for us because I wanted to see your reaction to one of Earth's most feared, hated and misunderstood species, the spider. And also because I wanted to ask you for a favour. Talk a new trade deal. Wait, these are from your homeworld? I exclaimed, nearly spilling my tea. Yes, two of over 45,000 different species of arachnid from our tiny little planet. To your left is the Mexican red knee tarantula, one of the most human-friendly spiders. To your right is the Australian funnelweb spider, the single most toxic and venomous arachnid in the animal kingdom, he stated, pointing at each box in turn. Incredible! I used a mid-leg to move one of the boxes closer to inspect it. Are they intelligent? No. Jumping spiders, yes, but only to an extent. Not by anyone's standards are they intelligent. They are essentially the bug killers of our world. They hunt insects, snakes, birds, and other creatures, depending on the species. Most humans hate them, he replied, handing me some photographs of the creatures he just mentioned. Why? I stood dumbstruck for a moment. Why do a lot of your Earth creatures have resemblances to Galactic Federation species? Some of the resemblances are... I looked at the red knee. Uncanny. No idea. Strange twist of fate. Sick joke by the gods. A universal anomaly. Who really knows? Genetic scans and DNA testing have proven repeatedly that each species is so far removed genetically that any real connection is worthless. Even if they look like you, they are far from you. See? He handed me a photograph of a human relative. The ape. Well, that's interesting. That's very interesting, I said, further looking at more photos. Now, the reason this is happening is because I need to tell you about something called arachnophobia. Fear of spiders. He looked at me, stern and patient. I put my now empty teacup down and looked at him. I am listening. 
Spiders, arachnids, have been a part of human evolution since we started. An evolution spanning millions of years. An average of, and this is still with the advanced medical tech we have nowadays, 200 people are killed by venomous spiders every year. This piece right here, he pointed to the funnel web, is responsible for half of that number. Seriously? He had to be joking. That's what I told myself. Humanity led the charge against the Incomni and wiped them out with few losses. How could that little insect kill a human? Seriously? Forty different protein toxins in those fangs, he replied, making sure the box was sealed. Forty? I backed away from it. We had three types of protein toxin, and one of them was an anaesthetic. By the Meshiach. So, with that in mind, we have developed as a species a very severe disdain, if not outright hatred of spiders, at least according to most people. There are freaks of nature that love them, keep them as pets, or breed them to farm them for anti-venom. You look like a giant fucking space spider. So... When meeting with humans, please keep this in mind. He looked at me and relaxed back in his seat with a smile. With the kind of damage these creatures cause, I am sure your fight-or-flight responses are somewhat... questionable. I clipped my mouthpieces a bit in a joking manner. He chuckled in response. There was one case in the northern US where a guy burned his house down because he saw a big spider. Another case in Australia where an infestation of funnel webs led to the use of military-grade explosives to demolish a building. We both let out a hearty laugh. Oh, so it's a kill it with plasma fire mentality? We've been there before and know how to handle it. I winked at him, clicking in amusement. That brings us to the next item on our agenda. We already have trade and working agreements between us, as well as colonization plans. Our xenobiologists, however, have discovered something very interesting about you, specifically related to your venom. If you indulge me, I would like to provide a demonstration. And rolled up one of his sleeves. If you think it is safe, then please be my guest. I stepped back and let him do his thing. Crazy human. That was all I could think as he picked up a knife and then cut open one of his arms, gritting his teeth in agony. Crazy human! I stood there absolutely gobsmacked at the sight as he collected some bandages and tied them, and then used a small injector. Crazy human! After a few seconds, he pulled the bandages off and showed me his now eviscerated arm. Crazy human! A crude, he said between gasps of pain. A crude demonstration, but you get the idea. What in the void are you doing? Oh my. I was cut off mid-sentence by the sight of the gaping wound now suddenly closing. The flesh of the parted now magically somehow sewing itself together, blood disappearing, the cut vanishing across a few seconds. Within less than 30 seconds, the wound was gone. The ambassador was aware from the shock, but fine. I grabbed his arm and looked closely at it. Marvelling at the miracle I was witnessing. I looked at him. How? He sat back down and took a drink of water. Crazy human. To put it bluntly, our biologists and scientists somehow came up with a sort of miracle healing agent to steal from your species' venom. With a combination of various ingredients, including plant materials, a certain type of hemp plant, and, of course, science, we made a few samples. He sat down, caught his breath, and handed me a small reinforced case full of vials with a blue liquid in them. Crazy human, I said aloud. I mean, uh, how does it work? He ignored my comment. Apparently when your venom is combined with a certain kind of chemical substance, it gains some staggeringly potent regenerative properties. Two types of protein and one type of anaesthetic protein, properly distilled and mixed to minister with care, we effectively have the single greatest medical achievement in our history, one we have been looking for for centuries. I calculated, thought, Considered, we had never even considered our venom to be of much use these days, not even in combat. Can it be mass-produced? The base ingredients, yes. Your venom, no. We have tried repeatedly to try and synthetically reproduce the prion-based protein that your venom produces, to no avail. It is simply too unique. That brings us to our state of affairs, he said, sitting up straight, getting serious. Indeed? I stood firm, thorax down in concentration. We would like to form a trade agreement for the mass production of this regenerative formula. We'll save countless lives, and will make us both staggeringly rich. Your people provide the venom, we provide the other ingredients. There is one more detail, though. He pushed the intercom button. Send in Mr. Hakim, please. The Torian ambassador, Hakim ol walked in, his hooves clanking on the ground. Yes, he said, ignoring the smell of blood and the spiders. 
I looked up at the towering man. Did he cut his arm open for you too? Please don't remind me, I can still smell it, he said simply. Crazy human. One of the ingredients in this medical formula is the Taurus alvarius plant. We have a human equivalent, aloe vera, but it is nowhere near as potent. See where I am going with this, he said, and let us think on it. We looked at each other. I spoke first. A species once thought to be toxic and venomous, even to look at, turning out to be the primary benefactors of the greatest medical advancement in galactic history. Thought we know but minus beasts that only know how to dig dirt and farm vegetables, now farming to contribute to one of the most life-saving plants in history, the Torian ambassador said in turn. Humans being humans, only with more helping than usual, Carson said in his turn. We all paused and thought. Fuck yeah, I'm in, we all said in unison, and began signing contracts and agreements.